would you have certified the election in 2020? Yes or no? Donald Trump had a problem. Mike Pence will not be on the ticket. He needed to find a new vice president. Pence, quote, deserves it. Different from the last one in one key way. Trump telling him, you're too honest. Do you believe he lost the 2020 election? I think that Donald Trump and I have both raised a number of issues with the 2020 election. When it comes to Trump choosing a vice presidential candidate, he's looking for one thing. He needed a liar. The type of person who will repeat his lies about the 2020 election. Senator, Ooh. yes or no? Okay. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Let, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Capable of twisting the truth about our democracy. I've answered election. your question with another question. And even our most fundamental freedoms. I never supported a national ban. J.D. Vance of Ohio told me that Republicans should back a national 15-week abortion ban. I certainly would like abortion to be illegal nationally. I never criticize people for not having kids. A bunch of childless cat ladies. J.D. Vance cannot be trusted. He's a flip-flopper. I hate the police, he wrote. We back the blue. What I've seen is a chameleon. Senator that's Vance. The question. He seems to have just adopted this persona. I'm going to ask you again. I'm a never Trump guy. Six years is not quite never. I'm extremely skeptical uh, that Mike Pence's life was ever in danger. Trump needed an accomplice. Do they think I just give off a used car salesman vibe? Mission accomplished. You answer my question and I'll answer yours. It's all right in front of our faces. It's been in front of our faces for nine years. And J.D. Vance is the disastrous running mate that fascists at the Heritage Foundation salivated over in front of our faces. We are in the process of the second American Revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. There are a lot of victories that have been secured. Some of them are partial. Some of them in ways that the other side doesn't yet know are foundations for what's coming. And that's just the beginning. The conservative movement, or as I really like to put it, the common sense movement, in the United States has really nothing to do with ideology, is ready to fight. We have confirmed news that Senator Vance is the vice presidential running mate. You will see a broad smile on my face <laughs> because you may know that we're good friends. I will offer two comments about that. The first is the entire list of names considered are great men and women, truly, truly, all of them friends of heritage. There among them though was someone that privately we were really rooting for and he's just been named the running mate. Why are, were we rooting for him? Not even because of politics and policy, but because of who he is. And this is who J.D. Vance is. I want to go back to what, what former President Trump said. He said they're going out of their way to not help people in Republican areas. There is no truth to that. And on uh, staging, Pentagon officials say that active duty troops were staged and ready to go before being called upon and were instantly out the door. So President Trump, former President Trump, is saying things that aren't true about that money being withheld from Republican areas. Well, Martha, I think you're actually confusing staging of resources from the rapid response of the U.S. military. I mean, look, in FEMA's defense, there are things after this hurricane that FEMA simply could not do. You actually need military command and control. You need military resources deployed to the area. And I think all the president has said is, frankly, what some of Kamala Harris's surrogates have said, which is that if these areas were a little bit more democratic, maybe Kamala Harris would have focused on them more. That acknowledgement is not to attack, frankly, the good folks of FEMA, it's to suggest that Americans are feeling left behind by their government, which they are, Martha. Notice that this self-admitted liar's response is that maybe if these areas that it's been proven that Trump is lying about were more democratic, maybe Harris would have focused on them more. But still no proof of that, just a couple maybes and an attempt to distance themselves from their direct attacks on FEMA. Okay, if you talk let's... to folks on the ground, we, we've had, I've had friends that have been in Boone, North Carolina, helping with the cleanup. It is an extraordinary sense of betrayal and being left behind. People are worried that their government doesn't care about them. I'm much more worried about the incompetence of Kamala Harris's administration that led to that more than Senator I am Vance, the fact that Donald Senator Trump Senator Vance, I'm just going to say that, that local officials, local officials, and FEMA officials say that is just flat wrong. They simply say people feel left behind after weeks of telling them from the moment any of these hurricanes made landfall that they're being left behind. J.D. Vance is in place to help create their followers' reality before they have a chance to even experience it. It's the same thing they've been doing about the election 
that Trump lost. I think a lot of our guys are skeptical of early voting, voting by mail. And, you know, Josh, I, I don't love the election season thing. I like having election yeah. day, but it is what it is. A lot of our guys are skeptical about early voting and voting by mail. Why would only their guys be skeptical of something that's supposed to be factual? Maybe because their skepticism has been dictated to them. Any final message you would leave uh, for Donald Trump if you were watching this? Just watch. They're going to steal the election and they're going to try to set you again because the Democrats are behind it. Absolutely. You're 100% sure of all that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's sure that the Democrats are behind. They've tried to stop him. Will you trust the election if Trump wins? Absolutely. Will you trust the election if Kamala wins? Nope. There you have it. It's been a staple of Trump's message to his followers ever since he lost. And J.D. Vance, again, is the most qualified to carry his dishonest words on the campaign trail, no matter how blatantly obvious it is that they're lying. Anthony, there is so much going on in Arizona this time around, and it also was kind of the, the center for election denialism over the past few years after the last election there. We all remember those images. Um, I know you asked uh, voters about this looking ahead to November. Um, what did we see about potentially challenging the results? Well, I ask this because, as you say, Arizona was at the center of a lot of things, but also because we've consistently seen over these years so many Republicans who continue to believe Donald Trump's false claims, right, that the election was rigged, as he says. Well, take a look at this. A priori, going into this, we asked, well, what should happen after the results are counted this year? And you get Donald Trump's voters who are split with 47% saying that the results should be challenged if Joe Biden wins. Joe Biden's voters don't feel that way, but half of Donald Trump's voters do, and that has real implications for democracy if people in advance are not trusting the election system. If you can convince enough people, not even the majority of people, but enough people that they can never trust their elections unless their guy wins, you built a completely different existence for them. And from that point, it's a simple process of inserting that false reality into literally anything that's said to them, knowing that they'll aggressively take it as fact, even when Vance admits that he's lying. It's ironclad. Trump and Vance themselves can't undo it. We played some other comments about migrants, well, what, uh, migrants, well, including in Aurora, in Colorado, where Trump said the city had been invaded and conquered by Venezuelan gangs. The Republican mayor of the city said flatly, the city and state have not been taken over or invaded or occupied by migrant gangs. So do you support Donald Trump making those claims that the Republican mayor says were grossly exaggerated and have hurt the city's identity and sense of safety? I understand what you're saying, that some people left behind, but he's making these statements that the mayor is flat out disputing. Well, Martha, you just said the mayor said they were exaggerated. Grossly um, exaggerated. There's got to be some. That means there's got to be some element of truth here. And of course, President Trump was actually in Aurora, Colorado, 